A number of weeks ago, I was on Instagram and I stumbled across a post titled Torture by Edgar Jones, which was a 1960s vibe track which immediately caught my eye and I loved the vibe of it. But who is Edgar Jones? Well, let's find out. On the 28th of April, Edgar Jones, who is a singer, songwriter and musician from Liverpool, released an album called Reflections of a Soul Dimension. But before we get into a short review, I will attempt to introduce you to Edgar. If you love the vibe of the flamboyant Northern 60s soul movement, you may well be attracted to Edgar Jones, previously in bands such as The Stairs and The Lars, and working alongside the likes of Paul Weller and Johnny Marr, he has since concentrated on performing and recording as a solo artist. His first solo venture was in May 2005, releasing Soothing Music for Stray Cats, which was nominated for a Mercury Music Prize. A very notable Noel Gallagher commented, It's probably one of the best records I have ever heard. The two artists have known each other for many years when Noel joined a band with his brother called The Rain, which evolved into what would eventually become Oasis. Reflections of a Soul Dimension is Edgar's latest studio album, which has been recorded and produced by Steve Parry for Stereo Par Records. What is interesting about this album, and importantly, in order to achieve the vibe of the period, is the recording process, which is almost exactly the same as it was back in the 1960s. No sampling, infinite layers of tracks or pitch correction here and there, this is about as analogue as you can make it in the modern day world. Looking at the album cover, it also has a vintage feel to it, and it even says stereo in the bottom left hand corner, making you believe that this is new technology. But what is the album like? Well, I haven't rushed into reviewing the album, but I have spent the last few weeks listening to it. It's available on a limited run of vinyl, but most people will stream the album, which is what I did. I've listened to it using my AKG reference headphones, desktop monitors and finally through my ageing but beautifully sounding Bauer and Wilkins speakers. First impressions are that the recording takes you straight back to the 60s with authentic feel and vibe of the period. There is plenty going on with great brass and string section, vintage drums, clean guitar and great vocals. This is definitely a very clever album that would take you back to the times of Burt Bacharach, who sadly passed away a few months ago. The album consists of 12 tracks, but what is interesting is that a 7-inch single titled Torture was released prior to this with two tracks that aren't included in the album. Torture, as you guessed, is the A-side and Lord Give Me Strength is the B-side, which is very cool indeed. To celebrate the launch of his new album, a party took place on the 3rd of May in London where you might just recognise one or two faces in the band, one of which is Steve Parry, who produced the album, who can just about play most instruments, which he did on this recording, except for guitars. So what did I think? Okay, so I've listened to the, the album in full and I have to say it is a great album and I've listened to it a lot over the last three or four weeks since it's been released. It is 12 tracks and it's a really good soulful moody environment that picks up towards the end of the album. It's really good. But what we have to remember, it's all old school is this. It's recorded in the 1960s ways. It's all been done digitally in terms of actually capturing the moment, but all the microphones, the, the, the process, um, the, the actual recording and putting it together, the production is very much 60s inspired. Edgar Jones, the actual album, in terms of writing the album, I'd say this is top class stuff. I didn't know what to make of it at first, on first uh, sort of listening, I, you know, and I'm new to Edgar Jones and I've done a load of research since that time. And it has grown on me. It's been on repeat almost. And the highlight tracks for me at the minute, and I have made some notes. Um, I'll just quickly go through these. Opening tracks, place my bets on you. Now, this is the only sort of minor negative. This is what I thought first time round on listening to the actual album. Um, as I felt that the melody does trip over the lyrics. Having said that, I've listened to it a number of times since that point. And I've got used to it. And I don't notice that so much. Perhaps it's because I better understand Edgar's voice and the way he sings and he writes and produces his music. That track itself has nice backing vocals in the 60s kind of soulful vibe if you will. Great brass section and strings in there as well. And all the way through the album you get a repeat of lovely horns, lovely string sections, great backing vocals which complement the great voice that Edgar has. And it's the 60s vibe right out of the box. Moving straight on to uh, I Still Believe In You, great snappy rhythm, also like a mod kind of feel to it. 
uh, in respect of the, the chord changes, you know, the guitars and things. And the guitars in this case was James Cole, um, which I have to say, it's, it's nice, simple rhythm staccato guitar work, and it's just very, very good. Coming back to me, third track, great opening string section, and I do like that, I really do. The strings make this, this album, and it does give it that 60s sort of, um, how can I put it? The atmosphere, I'm gonna have a bit of a slurp in my brew because I'm on a bit of a roll at the minute. Have a quick slurp. Mmm, cracking. So track number three is coming back to me. Great opening string section, relaxed, soulful vocals from Edgar, and I thought that was very, very good. I absolutely loved it, and there's a great hook in the chorus too, and you really must check these out, you really need to do. Owie, is this the end of our road? Um, the vintage bass drum at start, brilliant, absolute genius. There's no power drums in this, uh, ultra sort of heavy kick drums. You've got to think about uh, noisy kick drums in live concerts that generally overshadow the bass playing, and if not, the rest of the band. This was like, boom, boom. It was there, but in the 60s vibe, and you could hear it, you could feel it, but it wasn't too much, it was just nice. Now, what I have done, I've picked out probably about three tracks which really stand out for me, and uh, the next one is uh, What's The Matter Baby, and it was a good feel vibe to the, uh, the stereo strings of the intro was, was just really good, I like that. This will today, um, great harmony guitar work from James Cole at the start. I, I, yeah, it's just nice. Reflections of You and Me, uh, I did love that one, and it's a great build-up at the start to that track. So, Nothing Can Change. Now, this is a great ballad which illustrates the uh, Edgar's uh, strong points within his vocals and his lyrics and the, and the way he sings those lyrics. It starts low, it starts moody, it starts soulful, it gradually builds and builds and builds and then goes back again and builds and builds again. That is one of the standout tracks for me, it really is. Next track, Searching the World, picks up the pace, it's dramatic, um, it's involving, uh, it involves you as a listener, you, you're really getting into this and sort of the pressure's on you as a listener to, to, to keep up uh, and it is good. And um, determined vocals by Edgar to find the right words in, and that's the message within the song, he's trying to find the right words about the love in his life. Another standout track, now this is from the first time I heard this and I think I saw this um, on YouTube or listen to it on YouTube before the actual album was released and it's the uh, the walls come tumbling down and that is one standout track that really uh, caught my attention it's my favorite of the lot indeed uh, love the vocals uh, stereo backing at the end I'm watching <laughs> and then basically you've got another couple of tracks at the end sorry last track at the end no matter what this really takes the pace back down from being sort of on it, extreme, serious, down to a lovely arrangement within the, the ballad, almost a musical feel, like a, as if you go to see like a West End show, it's on, almost got like a musical feel to it. You can get this on Apple Music, which is up on my desktop at the minute, it's all on the streaming platforms. You can get the vinyls, guys, but it is limited. You can get that from Bandcamp if you want, or some really good outlets. Now there's a great little interesting bit from the seven inch vinyl, which I will show you now, which I just loved guys. Have a look at this. Edgar Jones, torture. Northern soul sing like tomorrow by the The situation has left us weak. The really I know what's left to speak. All of the love that we used to share. Okay, so in conclusion, I've listened to the album many, many times over the last few weeks. I like Edgar Jones, I like the way he sings, I like the way he writes his lyrics, I like the moody feel and vibe of this, this album. And Steve Parry has worked wonders with the recording, he really has, because it is 60s. And if you like the soul kind of vibe, you need to listen to this album. It's available on all the streaming platforms. You can buy the actual vinyl if you want to, which is good. But don't forget there's a seven inch single out there which includes two tracks which are not included on this album. So what would gigs and guitars give this album out of 10? Well, we're gonna give it nine and a half and it's just not made the 10 because at, on first listening, I felt that Edgar's lyrics tripped over the melody within the verse of the type of the first track on the, the album. And that's the only reason why. But since that time, I've become tuned into Edgar, his voice, his lyrics, his writing, and the way he sings and presents his songs. If you've enjoyed this edition of Gigs and Guitars, please think about subscribing. It will help the channel. And there is always time in the day for a brew. And we'll see you next time. Mmm. 
tracking. 